back to another Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama review. Today we'll be taking a look at one of the most recent box set releases, which is of course his seventh Doctor and New Adventures Volume 1, starring Sylvester McCoy as a very mysterious, very cunning and alien seventh Doctor, alongside two companions that I previously haven't encountered when reviewing on this channel, which are of course Ross Forrester, as played by Yasmin Bannerman, and of course Chris Quedge, as played by Travis Oliver. Now those are companions from the Virgin New Adventures that were released in the 1990s, and is an area of Doctor Who that I basically have absolutely no knowledge on whatsoever. I don't really know the canonology of that series. I know the amount of fans that are normally a fan of the Virgin New Adventures and normally feel very strongly about them. And it's just an area of Doctor Who that I've particularly not been very interested in. It is meant to be the adventures of the Seventh Doctor after the TV show, after leaving behind Ace. I know about that much. But other than that, I didn't really know much about these companions. And these are certainly my first ever encounters for them. I've not listened to Damaged Goods or Original Sin or anything like that, meaning that this is certainly a brand new chapter for the Seventh Doctor era that I was very excited to in fact be reviewing this month. First off, and as per usual, in the description below, I will leave the link to go and buy a release from the Big Finish website. It is a four-part box set, meaning that it is at the normal recommended retail of £23 for the physical edition at pre-order price, and the download version is £20. However, after the 31st of December 2018, that will be going up in price to the normal recommended retail of, I do believe, £35 for the physical edition and £30 for the download. So if you are interested by what I say throughout this review, I certainly recommend checking out the story details on the Big Finish website along with listening to the trailer. Firstly taking a look at how this box set in fact pans out it is very nice to be reviewing a box set that features the Seventh Doctor and is in the box set format because normally I'm very much used to the Seventh Doctor adventures being in the normal main range format being long-winded two-hour adventures normally with Ace or Mel meaning that those stories are normally a lot more complex have a lot more interesting ideas and it is very nice to have a box set that is more around the Seventh Doctor that is conveniently around Around him and say not a Bernie Summerfield box set that just so happens to include the Seventh Doctor and it is in fact a lot more precise and a lot less complex storytelling meaning that you get a lot more different locations and a lot more different settings in a much more smaller story format which is certainly a lot more convenient for the new listener. Also, the first episode is Trial of a Time Machine written by Andy Lane who is also the same person who wrote The Mahogany Murders, the pilot to Jago and Lightfoot which I have previously reviewed just recently as a part of my Jago and Lightfoot review series. The second episode is Vanguard, written by Steve Jordan, who is in fact a newcomer to Big Finish, so it was very nice to see a new writer in there. The next episode is in fact the Jabari Countdown, written by Alan Flanagan. And then the series finale of the box set is The Dread of Night, written by Tim Foley. Now all of these episodes are in fact single-handed ones that are not contained in any other stories. There's no plot arcs or anything like that, no intertwining threads. I do believe that the majority of these stories in fact follow on from each other as it is pretty much a brand new series of adventures. They aren't adapted from the novels or anything like that, meaning that the text is a lot more focused around the audio drama format as opposed to the long-winded, more literal meanings of text that we've had in, say, Original Sin or Damaged Goods, which are, of course, originally novels, meaning that they are a lot different in the way that they approach the audio drama format. The whole box set is directed, produced and script edited by Scott Handcock and, of course, the executive producers are Jason Higg and Ellery and Nicholas Briggs. And I think the first thing that I can comment on when it comes to the production of this box set is considering that this is a classic series box set, it is certainly a lot more 21st century in its approach, which is quite nice. It's nice to have the classic series actually in a brand new era, feeling a lot more modern and a lot more different. And of course, this is supported by the more one hour story format, much like how new series Doctor Who is, as I say, which is perfect for the new listener. And I think that Scott Hancock has a brilliant way of directing is something of which that I have absolutely adored in previous box sets that he has done, such as the War Master, for example, one of my favourite big finished box sets of all time. That box set is incredibly cinematic and modern, and this box set certainly has a same reoccurring theme. It does feel like 21st century Doctor Who, however, it still has a few attributes in there that do kind of still make it feel rather classic in its approach. 
Taking a look at the companions and characters for this box set, starting off with Sylvester McCoy as the Seventh Doctor himself. To be honest, if you are a fan of the Seventh Doctor, it has been an absolutely brilliant few months for him because we of course had the monthly range recently, the normal trilogy with him and Ace and Mel. And then of course we've gone on to have two further adventures, the one of which from the last month, which is Warlock's Cross with Tracy Childs. And I do believe to also finish off this year, we have another one featuring Ace and Iris Wildtime along with Hex as well. Well, so you've got absolutely loads of Seventh Doctor in the past few months, which is very lucky. It's nice to have a lot more exposure for his Doctor. And something of which that I have seen in previous adventures is we have so many different versions of his Doctor. In this box set, I feel like he's a lot more of the calculating professor that we've seen in the darker version of the Seventh Doctor adventures. And it is nice to see him with new companions as well. You do very much get used to him with Ace and Mel because those are the companions that we've seen within the TV show. And he doesn't particularly have many other companions, unlike, say, the Sixth Doctor, who has had absolutely loads of Big Fish companions. And of course, next year, we do in fact get a new companion for the Seventh Doctor, which I do believe was a character originally seen in Greatest Show of the Galaxy, which has just been announced on the Big Finish website just recently. So it is nice to see him around these different people. And once again, as he is stepping into that professor kind of role, he is a little bit more like a lecturer to his new companions, kind of teaching them about the universe, which is rather nice. Taking a look at the companions for this box set, starting off with Yasmin Bannerman as Ross Forrester. Of course, as I said earlier, my first ever encounter of her character. It's in fact very interesting because both her character and Chris Quedge are in fact uh, people who are a part of the judicial system of I do believe the future version of Earth or something like that, meaning that they have a much different approach to the normal sort of society and the different places that they go to. Every single location that they actually visit, they kind of like to introduce things beforehand, they kind of like to reveal where they are before the Doctor in fact introduces it to them, so they are very intelligent people. And I think that Yasmin Bannerman does a very nice portrayal. It is clear that her character is a very strong female. She comes from a very interesting background. In some of the stories, we do reference a few conflicts with her family in the past, which I don't know if that is something that is just referenced from the Virgin New Adventures, or that is something that has been addressed in previous stories. But she's nice, she's interesting, and she's different. And once again, a bit of a polar opposite to Ace, who is the more rebel teenager kind of character. Moving on to Travis Oliver as Chris Quench. Once again, he's more kind of a rebelish male. Once again, he is a part of the judicial system and does in fact have a rather lawful way of looking at things and it is rather systematic the way that he locates different things on different planets. However, at the same time, I like to think of him as a little bit more of the freelance kind of male character who is very much interested in females and kind of meeting different people. He is nice, he is likeable. However, one of the main issues that I have with both of the companions is I feel like I am missing knowledge of those characters. In no way this is not an introductory box set to these characters. We don't in fact have the first story where they go on with the Doctor for the first ever time to have their first adventures. This is in fact kind of catching up with these characters at a later date when they've already had some adventures with the Doctor, meaning that there is a little bit of development missing there. And I must admit, it did feel a little bit disjointed to start with. I kind of felt like I was meant to have knowledge that I didn't have when going into this series. So do be warned, this is not an adventure adventure starting from the very beginning. It's kind of just joining on at the halfway point and you're already meant to know these companions which could lead to a little bit of sort of confusion to start with which is certainly something that I did experience. Taking a look at the first story of the box set we have Trial of a Time Machine written by Andy Lane. Now this episode is directly up my street because as you can tell I've moved to uni recently and I'm in fact studying law. I'm doing a law degree and this episode is basically all all around law. It's a part of a judicial system on a planet, meaning that the two companions naturally have knowledge in this area beforehand, meaning that they can kind of contribute to the story about the judicial system that they are aware about and the way that kind of compares to the planet that they come from. And this story has a rather interesting way of approaching law, which is the way that this story is all focused around the TARDIS. And basically very early on in this story, the TARDIS gets sent off course and it lands in a teleport bay for
or other time capsules to in fact land and it turns out that it arrives at the same time as another time travelling ship meaning that it causes distortions and basically the time ship ends up being half landing in the place that they are meant to be but also it gets plummeted to several thousand years in the future meaning that the ship is essentially ripped apart all the people on the inside are in fact killed and that is essentially down to the TARDIS and the TARDIS's own fault and essentially the Doctor for piloting the TARDIS as well meaning that as a result as a part of this planet the judicial system in fact puts the TARDIS on trial meaning that we see a rather interesting story as the Doctor essentially being kind of the lawyer or solicitor of the TARDIS and kind of defending it in court which is a very unusual way to approach a Doctor Who story but it's something different nonetheless and it's certainly an interesting approach to giving the TARDIS a little bit of character development whilst in the classic series which we don't really get too often it's only in the new series where we've kind of had this idea that the TARDIS has its own personality and its own character I think that within the TV show itself within the classic series the TARDIS is much more of just a machine as opposed to an actual character the planet that they encounter throughout this story is in fact called Thrantas and this whole story is based around the idea that even if the defendant is in fact guilty of committing a crime or offence such as say murder or theft or burglary or an ABH or something like that, instead even if they are guilty the court or the magistrum as it is referred to in fact decides if that act or offence has in fact committed something bad to society. So for example, if you kill somebody who is in fact a horrible member of society, for example another murderer, you can in fact let off for that crime simply because it positively affects the future of that society. And I think that it is a very interesting way of approaching law and if you are a fan of law or somebody who is studying law like myself, then it's kind of a story that will no doubt actually interest you because it is so different from our legal system that we have in the UK meaning that naturally it is very alien and very different and of course at the same time the companions are in fact plummeted into the thousand years in the future where they in fact see what the TARDIS has done and the actions that that has caused and in fact the casualties that the TARDIS has created which is something of which that is rather dark and it is essentially the TARDIS and the Doctor's fault which is very interesting and something of which that isn't particularly touched on too much which once again kind of adds to the darker side of this story on to episode two of this series we have Vanguard as written by Steve Jordan as I say newcomer to Big Finish and this story is very much a stereotypical landing the Doctor and his companions within a conflict and they need to figure out what side they are on in this conflict and basically in this story we go to the planet of Vanguard as the episode is conveniently also titled and we have these two different sort of lines of defence one of which is called Dauntless and the other is called Intrepid and they there has been in the past some chemical warfare a little bit like so World War II at the very end of that where we had of course the bombs that were landed on Nagasaki and Hiroshima and we had a absolutely horrific side effects of that and of course this episode almost takes that how it plummets it into an alien situation and we see how this planet has essentially been reduced to ruins a desolation and you have these androids that are then around the planet and they need to clear up the ruins and they need to try and find the survivors depending on what side that they are on however the doctor and his companions are soon in fact split up and we have one of the companions on the side of the dauntless and the other on the side of the intrepid and both of which are kind of against each other without even realizing it and we find out that the younger generation of these two societies have in fact came together and almost bonded and they have a little bit of a revolution that they then want to overthrow the older generation in order to create almost a peace for society and at the very end of the episode we have that whole idea of the younger generation being the new society and putting in a new more peaceful order and I think that it is an interesting episode the seventh doctor certainly has some rather interesting moments he's in fact infected throughout this story through a little alien device that is called I do believe 
a tracker or something like that, or a tracer. I've got it written in my notes. A taker, in fact. I was nearly there. And a taker is basically this thing that infects the bloodstream and eventually kills the person that it has inhabited, and once again is a form of chemical warfare. The younger generation, due to them kind of mixing very early on, have created some form of immunity from the chemical drugs and the chemical warfare that has been used. And yeah, the seventh doctor is put in a rather weak position throughout the story, and also the companions are also affected. It's in fact very nice to see the doctor and his companions affected by the chemicals and nearly kind of put on death row to be honest because by the very end of the episode they do in fact come very close to scathing death. My only kind of flaw for this story is it did feel a little bit basic I must admit. I kind of feel like it did follow that stereotypical Doctor Who formula of landing in a war zone and then of course having the different parties and then the companions naturally end up being split. Normally the doctor ends up on one side and the companion ends up on the other and kind of the doctor wants his companion back and the companion wants to get back to the doctor. It is very much stereotypical Doctor Who that has been used time and time again in many different stories. I kind of feel that this episode does try to have its own identity by the fact of including chemical warfare in there and I love the fact of the parallels between World War II and Hiroshima and Nagasaki. However at the same time it kind of failed to grab my full attention. I think that if Steve Jordan is to do more stories in the future, I would certainly like to see some more interesting storytelling that maybe has a bit more personal and experimental ways of actually delivering the story, as opposed to just being more stereotypical Doctor Who. It is still a nice listen, however. Certainly the story of the box set, where I kind of felt like I was missing knowledge about the companions. I kind of felt like there was a relationship beforehand that I was lacking in. I kind of felt like I was missing out on something. It was the first experience in the box set where I kind of felt we were joining these companions halfway through their adventures as opposed to being at the very beginning. We are also introduced to a woman in this story that is in fact the person who is guilty of basically throwing all of the chemical weapons into the sky and killing absolutely everybody and ending up in the devastation that the kind of survivors are currently living in, meaning that we do have a rather kind of terrorist style character but somebody of which who believes they are doing the right thing and even at the very end of the story they kind of believe that once again they are still correct however the younger generation kind of need to work with them because they have knowledge of technology and they essentially know how to put the planet on the right track so hopefully in the future there is going to be an alliance between this planet in the behind the scenes it does certainly reference how you could have a sequel to this story it does certainly raise a few questions and does kind of leave the viewer guessing what is going to happen to vanguard in the future if anything it might be nice to have a quite timey wimey story where you have the first half hour and the first act dedicated to the time zone in the present where the Doctor has currently landed with his companions in the desolation and the war zone and then maybe in the later half of the story you could have had another one of the companions that is in fact in the future to see how the planet has in fact changed and been a little bit better and that has a rather civilised society. I think that might have been a nicer way to approach this story but episode three of this box set is the Jabari Countdown and once again is a rather unusual episode that kind of takes the historical setting of World War II and basically mathematicians. We all know, of course, if you've uh, listened to the episode Criss Cross with the Sick Doctor, my first ever Big Finish main range review on this channel, uh, we did in fact have Fletcher Park in that story and that whole idea of code breaking. And in this episode, we basically have some mathematicians that have been recruited essentially in order to code break for the World War. However, it turns out they aren't code breaking for the world war but instead they are code breaking for an alien that is in fact trying to uh, get their planet back after another alien has an uprising on that planet and their whole civilization is based around mathematical codes. So this story is very much about almost trying to find an apprentice to go back to this planet and solve the war that is currently unfolding there. And I think that this story is certainly very mysterious and the whole episode is rather intriguing. Even the description on the Big Finish website is certainly one of the more intriguing uh, plot descriptions for this whole box set. I think that Alan Flanagan certainly does a good job of revealing certain aspects of the plot as 
certain points throughout the story. We originally go to this rather mysterious looking cottage on the island and we find out that the doctor realises that not all is what it seems. We have a murder and somebody locked within a cupboard, meaning that naturally it's almost a murder mystery to start with, which got me engaged almost instantly. And then we have this whole idea of the cottage not in fact being a cottage but it is in fact a spaceship that has now been shielded and the companions as well as the different mathematicians that have been recruited need to solve the situation before essentially the cottage explodes and kills everybody on the inside and we have this whole idea of the people essentially being took over by this entity and them using numbers in order to communicate different issues which is rather interesting once again very alien and I think that this story is certainly a very very good one hour drama. Once again, if you are a new listener to Big Fish, this episode is rather easy to follow and is a rather enjoyable listen, but at the same time, certain elements of this story may confuse you. And it's also nice to have different people from different nationalities in this story. We do have a character from Austria who has previously run away because she has a little bit of a darker past where she has been involved with the Nazis and acting with the Nazis in order to create propaganda films, and she kind of wants to seek a new life and it turns out that this opportunity comes up and she takes it, meaning that for once in this story the German-Austrian Nazi character isn't in fact the villain, which is a stereotype that normally quite a lot of historical stories do in fact take, so it is nice to have a little bit of a difference on that. And yeah, it's a very entertaining episode and probably one of my favourite of this release, maybe the one just below the uh, Travel Time Machine story because I think that is certainly a very powerful story indeed. The alien in this story is of course called the Jabbery, much like how they are referred to in the title and I love the whole idea in this episode that the different people in this cottage were in fact turning against each other because of the entity of the Jabbery itself and they're kind of lurking into each other's pasts and finding different things out about their pasts and we have these wonderful revelations between the different characters which make this story in fact rather intense. You do in fact have a very claustrophobic situation where you have these people turning against each other that don't even know each other before the actual story but it is very intense. It's very character revealing as well and we get introduced to this old woman who is once again not all what she seems and she's in fact the northern woman from Benidorm. I recognised her voice in this episode and when I researched her for this review I realised who it was and yeah she's the northern woman from Benidorm in case you've in fact seen that program. Program. I've not in many many years because it definitely went quite downhill towards the end to say the least. But yeah it's nice to have her in the story, she's a very warm funny character but also at the same time has a little bit of a dark side and leads to a nice revelation at the end of this story as well. The way to summarise this story is it is a very 21st century way of approaching classic series Doctor Who. There is a lot of 21st century themes in there, such as sexuality and gender, which is very nice to see that represented within classic series Doctor Who. In the series finale or fourth episode of this box set, I suppose you could call it because they aren't necessarily linked in any way, is The Dread of Night, written by Tim Foley. And boy, where was this episode when Halloween happened last month? Because this is by far one of the creepiest uh, Big Finish stories that I've listened to in a long time. I was in fact listening to this episode on an evening and it is just really haunting. It is a stereotypical haunting Doctor Who story. It did remind me of Ghost Light. We had the Doctor and his companions landing in Northumbria in the north, which is in fact incredibly convenient for me once again. Firstly, we had the first episode, which was all based around law, and I'm doing a law degree. And then we have this episode, which is set in the location of Northumbria. And I'm in fact currently studying in a uni called Northumbria University, based in Newcastle. So yeah, this episode is once again rather personal to me and rather convenient that this came out literally within a few months of me moving to uni. So yeah, rather unusually spooky once again. But it is nice to have an episode based in the north. I don't think I've ever experienced a Doctor Who story that is this far up north without being in Scotland, but Northumbria is kind of the bit between Newcastle and Scotland, kind of. I wasn't in fact aware of that, but turns out that is where it is. I did do once again a bit of research before this review, but this is a stereotypical story where you have this child that has essentially been possessed by this once again mysterious entity that in fact manifests itself within a child's drawing and we have the whole idea of this story of people eventually disappearing from the house one by one 
first sleeve has the previous occupants of the house and the workers and they disappear long before the doctor and his companions arrive and then you have the family also in a little bit of distress as well because they have lost people as a part of the family i do believe the father previously died about a month ago along with the mother as well meaning that one of the younger members of the household is in fact now the leader so she's tried to cope with that position and then you have this rather unusual doctor character that has been brought in in order to in fact uh, treat the rather possessed girl however it turns out that she isn't the one who you think is the main alien which i think is really good i honestly thought that she was the main villain but it turns out she's just a little bit creepy unusual so i like that once again some good unpredictability throughout this story that kept you guessing all the way throughout once again scott hancock does an incredibly brilliant job at actually directing this story it does feel incredibly haunting and eerie and it's pretty much a perfect doctor who halloween special as it does feel so stereotypically dark especially by using child's drawings it is such a brilliant idea the actual character itself i can't remember the name of the actual sinister little girl's drawing at sandy which is so brilliantly creepy once again it is on the same lines of chucky it's kind of just this child's toy that is in fact got a darker history around it but i think that scott hancock as i said did a very good job of directing there is several moments throughout this story where i in fact jump there is a few jump scares which i don't really expect from the audio drama i think that this is the first ever time that i've properly jumped out of my skin literally whilst listening to this story so i certainly recommend if you've got high quality headphones listening to this story on an evening in the dark with the story at full blast because it has some brilliant surround sound around it it reminds me a little bit of knock knock from series 10 and yet even on second listen because i listened to this whole box set in fact twice all the way around even on the second listen i still was unexpected by the jump scare moments and did in fact make me jump for a second time around so the good thing is this story isn't a one trick wonder it in fact is one that you can re-listen to and still be just as scared by it and still have a lot of mystery behind it as well that episode is certainly my favorite of this box set followed by trial of the time machine then the jabari conundrum and then also vanguard there at the very end as well simply because of the flaws in that story of it being a little bit too stereotypical doctor who overall that is that for the new adventures of the seventh doctor volume one presumably there's going to be a volume two in the future who knows overall i think that this is a rather intriguing box set certainly goes to a lot of different areas i love the variety in this set to start with of course child the time machine is very much in the far future on a planet called frantus so it's very alien and very different same with vanguard as well very much an alien setting with a few human elements added in there and then the final two stories of this box set go back to earth and we have world war locations and then we also have the haunted house story at the very end as well so i think that if anything i can kind of summarize this box set as a little bit for everyone unless you like pure historicals because there isn't one of those in this box set unfortunately but i do think that it is nice it has a lot of variety however i think the main flaw of this box set and one of the main reasons why i needed to listen to it twice is simply because of the companions as i say i feel like i am missing some knowledge which meant that it was a little bit sort of contorting to start with and a little bit uncomfortable because unlike Mel and unlike Ace you feel like you understand their backstory so it would have been nice if this box set maybe delivered a little bit more of an effort to introduce the characters once again for those new listeners because I feel like this is an opportunity to have a new start for the seventh doctor it's a great price as well for the box set so I think that if you are a new listener to Big Finish box sets are certainly a good place to start because for a smaller recommended retail price you get more stories and more variety so i think that i can quote this story as sort of very good and high production value very much 21st century classic series doctor who but at the same time that variety and the fact that the companions are somebody who you kind of are meant to know already I think that this series is just a little bit less effective and i think that could end up especially in cases such as vanguard where this series does have a few duds here and there certainly isn't the best big finish box set that i've listened to i did expect a little bit more from it uh, i was certainly quite hyped for this one and the end of it did leave me a little bit disappointed just a little bit but at the same time it's still entertaining 
and different so that is I suppose quite good that is that for this review I hope you've enjoyed it if you have any questions about this release then please do leave them in the description below and I'll try my best to answer them at some point in the future stay tuned for more Doctor Who big finish reviews in the future for the rest of 2018 we do have a few more box sets coming out including unit revisitations and the second War Master box set as well which I'm incredibly excited for along with a lot more singular releases in there as well so yeah thank you for watching let's just see you all next time Bye for now.